This book takes the history of science and it looks at how we can understand that and the potential for both growth and discovery set against the potential for catastrophe. There are simple experiments to, desc to describe and display the principles behind the science while at the same time giving them a bit of fodder for the imagination to understand how it was that some people could perhaps twist this knowledge into catastrophic purposes. That first book was a jumping off point. Each of us, myself and my three children who collaborated on the title, found ourselves very curious and indeed eager to find out more about the history of science in a way how to put these experiments into a context. So whether it's the case of Galileo and his telescope or Newton's laws of motion, they're wonderful guideposts to the learning that has underpinned the history of science. It's an ideal way of coming to grips with science on a very tangible, hands-on level. So using that same hands-on experience that we developed in the first book, we've also had a chance to harness that same energy and enthusiasm to explore some wider issues, issues that relate more to the history of science and how we can all benefit from that. Now, not every child benefits or finds the best inspiration in the classroom. They might need a bit of a kick start, some, some sort of spark that will excite their imagination. And that's where these books come in. It's an oblique way, it's a, it's a left field way of coming into the same science that we all find around us. Sir Isaac Newton, one of the greatest scientists in history, once modestly claimed that if he was able to see so far, it was only because he stood on the shoulders of giants. Children can follow Newton's example, join him up there on the shoulders of those great scientists, and see how far they can see.